Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the August 14th River Falls City Council meeting. First thing we'll do is stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, Christy, can I have a roll call, please? Here. Here. Gagne. Here. Morset. Here. Odine. Here. Page. Here. Watson. Here. Okay, next we have the approval of the minutes from the July 24th meeting. I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next we have approval of the bills with Mr. Watson. Mr. Mayor, I move for the approval of the bills in the amount of $832,906.23, subject to Comptroller. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next we'll move on to public comments. Um, it looks like there's a few people that want to talk tonight. I'm guessing they're either here about the snowmobile renter's license <laughs> or they want to talk about the relicensing the dam. So if we, uh, what we'll do instead of... We can just, if you can just kind of get in line and be patient, we'll do it that way. So whoever wants to get up first, you're more than welcome to get up and we can just kind of, anybody wants to get up after, just everybody knows how to come up and sign in and state their name. So I am Judy Foster Babcock, president of the Kinnikinnick River Land Trust here tonight to speak to you about the resolution regarding the approval to engage in the integrated licensing process. A uh, copy of these remarks are provided for you. I did put them on your spot or your seats there. So, Hello, City Council members. As president of the Kinney Kinnick River Land Trust, I am submitting a copy of Kinney Kinnick Resolution August 8th, 2000, or August 8th, the 2nd, adopted by the Board of Kinney Kinnick River Land Trust. This resolution acknowledges the community planning effort that led to the River Falls City Council adopting resolution 6234 on February 28, 2018. <coughs> the Board of Kinnikinnick River Land Trust urges the City Council to consider alternative or parallel tracks to achieve the intent and outcomes reflected in that resolution 6234, just as the City did successfully in 2015 when they started the traditional licensing process with FERC and simultaneously applied for a license extension, which they were granted, by the way. The Board of KLT recommends the City pursue a FERC license extension with license surrender date certain of no later than August 31st, 2033 for Junction Falls and of August 31st, 2023 for Powell Falls to enable the City to achieve the complete restoration of the Kinnikinnick River to free flowing as early as 2035 and no later than 2040 as outlined in Resolution 6234. We ask you to consider that the integrated licensing process with settlement agreement recommended by Kevin Westhus, the City Utility Director, will include a five-year period of FERC-facilitated public meetings, community debate, stakeholder input, and FERC-ordered study requirements. If FERC grants the license, the term will be at least the minimum legal license period of 30 years, meaning that the license would expire in 2053 would also mean that the city will have to submit a subsequent surrender application for Junction Falls by, no, by or before 2028, approximately, with associated expenses and surrender fees to be granted the license surrender by FERC in time to achieve the planned restoration date. We understand the parallel track challenges that presents for city staff and the resources that it might take, but based on the experience the city had with their 2015 effort, we think that it is a good investment and we urge the council to consider the benefits to the community now and in the future to achieve the resolution that you've already adopted. Thank you very much. Thanks, Judy. Okay, who's ever next? Anybody else want to talk? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Robert Chambers. Thanks for letting us speak here tonight. Uh, I'm here tonight as a private citizen. I'm a downstream landowner. Uh, I live in Clifton Township on the Kinnikinnick River. Been involved with Kinney protection, the health of the Kinney for decades in River Falls. 
what the city and the corridor committee accomplished i think is wonderful they have set the results for whatever it is that's going to happen and to have disparate stakeholders get together the city provided that opportunity and they came up with what it is they see as the future for the free-flowing Kinnikinnick River. I think that's a great result. Congratulations to the City Council and the Corridor Committee for accomplishing that. The question now is the process to get there, and there is more than one. I do support the resolution you're going to be considering tonight for ILP with settlement agreement. I think that will get the city to the place that the stakeholders and the council and the UAB wants it to be. Everyone's in agreement. But there is a second path that I think could be easier and perhaps less costly. Easier because the ILP, by its very nature of facilitated public meetings, could potentially bring the possibility of relitigating old objections. There, the other path would be one of the two options. One is an extended license, uh, and one is a surrender at a delayed date. Those, I think, are going to be a process that is smoother for the community and for the city council. And so I would like you to, to consider those as running in parallel in the future. I've been told that there are a couple conversations uh, with city staff and FERC officers. In one of them, they said, no, ILP with settlement, that's the way you have to go. In the other, FERC said, no, there are other options, including this de delayed surrender or extended license. Um, because FERC is not providing you with absolutely clear guidance, I think this is an opportunity for, e for the city to take that allows parallel process and perhaps that easier path will be the one that makes sense to us in two or three years as the process happens. So I'm here tonight to encourage you to consider one of the other paths in partnership with the ILP um, with settlement agreement. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Rob. Anybody else? Hello, my name's um, Jeff Bjork. Um, um, I'm a former council member. I had the chance to vote on this back in February. I'm also a, um, a citizen of River Falls currently. My family's been in River Falls actually before um, there was ever dams built for the hydro, but that doesn't matter. We're, what we're doing is for today and for tomorrow. I'm also a fisherman, and I find it interesting that we talk about trying to improve the quality of the Kenny. When, when I talk to all the fishermen, um, where I live on the lower canyon, they all say, why, I ask, why do you fish down here? And they say, we fish here because there's more um, trout and they're bigger, which kind of contradicts what we're trying to achieve maybe in some regards. My family, we have three kayaks ourselves, and um, no offense to my friends that are um, rental pro uh, businesses, but the kayaks are not helping the lower kinney. They're destroying it in, in many regards. But let me talk about as when I was a, a council member. Um, there was six of you that are presently on the council and myself, we all voted seven to zip to um, approve the um, relicense of the dam. And at that time, we realized that we were gonna march forward and take the dams out someday with the um, Powell Dam being taken out in five to eight years and then a restoration after that, which would probably clean it up somewhere around 2028, but to start taking it out in 2026, we realized that the upper dam had a minimum of 60 to 75 years of good life before any repair had to be taken out, but that someday that would be taken out too, so we could once again see the cascades, not the falls, but the cascades of the Kenny Connect. 
We realized that the dams would be taken out at no cost to the citizens of the um, city of River Falls and that there'd be private funding for this. Knowing this, that the, um, we were gonna be taking out the lower dam, we knew that in 2026 it would be taken out and that'd give us seven to eight years. And I know somebody will probably be talking later because Mr. Hansen normally does about the finance, but let's keep in mind that seven to eight years of keeping that both dams in, in place easily gives us over a million dollars, one million dollars in profitable revenue to the city. That's just the profits. That's not taking away any costs of, of what it had, um, cost to remove the dams, but that's a pure profit as well. In that seven to eight years, it would allow the outside group and the associations the time to gather the money and the plans to what, what it, it's, what's it gonna take to remove the dams. And then we talked about the removal of the upper dam somewhere around 2040. That again would give about a seven to eight years um, um, span after the removal of the Powell Dam to learn and see what, we, what worked and what didn't work with the removal of the lower dam. And also in that span, after the removal of the lower dam, again, that's another million dollars in revenue, profitable revenue to the city. Um, um, and again, that would give outside groups and associations um, a chance to gather and re the required funds for the removal of the dam. So I'd love, I'd love to see the cascades of the Kenny Connect River flow again too, but financially, I said it back then, financially it makes no sense. But historian, as a historian, I'd love to see the cascades. But um, in, in, in let me bring this up too, because I was here about two months ago, removing the dams too, could change a lot of things, including our wildlife. And I'm a big turtle guy, I think you guys know, and the turtle habitat will be changed and potentially destroyed in some regards, by re especially by removing the lower dam, which has always been a pond down there, whether it was made by man or it was made by the beavers, there's always been a, pan a pond down there. So I guess all I'm doing is trying to share where we were um, s not even six months ago that we approved the relicense and I hope that we continue on that path and that we relicense once again. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Anybody else? Go ahead. Well, I'm the wrong Bill Hansen that he mentioned, but I'll still, <laughs> I typed something up, so I better say it. Um, I'm Bill Hansen from River Falls. I'm echoing apparently a lot of things that Mr. Bjork said, but I'll, I'll just read them as typed. Uh, less than six months ago in this very room, I and many others watched the City Council unanimously vote in favor of the resolution to relicense the dams. At the beginning of that meeting, Councilman Marset opened up with a few words from Mayor Toland, who was unable to attend. To paraphrase, the Mayor advised the City Council to vote for the resolution as written. The City Court, the Kinney Corridor Project Committee and the River Falls Utility Board recommendations based on two years of focused effort and strong public involvement and funded by a couple hundred thousand dollars in taxpayers' money had resulted in the proposed resolution. Path forward was now determined. Relicense the dams with a proposed long-term plan for eventual removal. A unanimous 7-0 vote was the goal. Uh, with that vote, all sides could feel reasonable and workable compromises had been reached and that River Falls could have a feeling of solidarity and be able to move forward. Of course, um, one councilman couldn't abide by that exact idea and used the absence of Mayor Toland and the goal of unanimous vote to press and barter for 11th hour changes to accelerate the dam removal timelines. Fortunately, other council members countered with their own last minute points adding that no tax money would be used on the project, dam removal and stream bed restoration would be solely funded with private money, the city would have complete ownership of the dam removal project once the private funds, based on actual quotes and formal estimates, had been secured. With those last minute mid-meeting changes, the city council achieved their 7-0 unanimous decision, mission accomplished. Now six months later, there are rumblings that the whole issue is sort of on the front burner again. Really, it's time to move up, wrap this up, time to wrap this up and get on with more pressing issues. Police stations, Glen Park, New City Water Lift Station, school safety, free dental care for all River Falls residents, the <laughs> list goes on and on. So I just hope this doesn't happen every time we have a new council member or a new mayor. 
pretty simple. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Okay. Good evening. I'm Francis Ogden. I live at 710 Valley View Drive in River Falls since 1969. I'm uh, basically here tonight to uh, uh, encourage you to do as recommended by the utility board and uh, adopt the resolution that's in tonight's packet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ogden. Hello, my name is Lauren Kaminsky, resident of the city of River Falls. I am speaking as a community member and also as a representative of the Friends of the Kinney. Um, I just want to keep it brief, but we are in support of the resolution that was created by the Kinney Quarter Committee and voted upon by the council in February. We just ask you to follow the most fiscally responsible route to reach the end goal of removing both dams um, by the agreed upon dates by pursuing either the license extension request or license surrender with delayed effective date. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Mr. Mayor, I have a quick, I have a quick public comment I'd like to make. Yep. More person oh, from oh, the oh, hang on. Oh, wait. <laughs> Good evening. Oh. We need this. Good evening, Dan, council members, and fellow guests here. Chief, I don't need your help tonight. I think we've got the, yeah, we've got the Kinney board thing running tonight. I had a, just a few brief things to say. Uh, I'm William Hansen. I'm in the town of River Falls. I breathe air, so I like to have better, less pollution from, car from carbon energy sources and things. But I'm here actually tonight just to congratulate the city council and the city itself and five years, I'm looking back at five years of the report on the, the dams and the hydros and what they've done in that five years. In that five years, they've generated a hundred or one, I had trouble with this last time I'm up here. It must be in the mayor's presence. There's kind of an aura that takes away some of this. Anyway, the, the, uh, the uh, dams and hydros generated over 10 million kilowatt hours of electricity in that five year period. That's renewable hydroelectricity and it's very valuable to me. I think we should continue to do that. The, when uh, we look at that five year study of hydroelectric sales, we find that this, the hydroelectric sales returned to the city over $735,000. And that in order to understand that well, Look at that report because the hydros provided money to the city bu budget in four different ways. One is the depreciation that we're using from the dams. The dams have been continuing to pay down that every year. There's a pilot calculation that's entered in that goes to the city, and that's uh, actually money that's there that's in, in lieu of taxes. It's as if the dams were a public or were a private enterprise and would have a tax burden they pay that they have the dams every year then of course there's a the net revenue of the taxes and last year lo and behold we included a hundred and four thousand dollars was included in the operating costs of the dams which actually was a kinney corridor cost that's not really related in my mind to the actual fun functioning of the dams and hydros nice to use that money but do give credit to the dams for having provided that money because if they were not there, that $735,000 would not be there either. There's a really a strong element that would like to say that you can make a lot of money buying, and, buying electricity wholesale and then selling it. When you do that in the five years of that uh, 10 million kilowatt hours of electricity, 
the return on that would have been $183,000 would have been returned to the city at that time. Actually, if you look at the $735,000 that the dams produced, minus the $183,000 that you would have received from wholesale purchase and sell, the city would have lost over half a million dollars in that five-year period should the hydros and dams not have been there. I encourage you to continue support for the dams and hydros. The dams and hydros may at some point in the future need to be replaced. They may need to be upgraded. I, my recommendation as the, I made to you oh, six or eight months ago was that this is really good business. You've got a captive uh, market. You have a good product. It meets the needs. And I think you should expand hydro production in River Falls. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Anybody else? Okay. Hang on one second. Sure. Is it, are you going to talk about this? No. Okay. Uh, Leslie Bertkowski is here from TRC who's helping us with the relicensing. Leslie, is there anything you need to clarify by anybody's statements or anything? Everything's okay? Okay. Thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take an opportunity to thank everybody uh, who voted in the primaries today for participating in the political process. Thank you. And they're, they're still open until uh, 8 o'clock, so if you haven't voted, get out there. Oh, okay, next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. First one is a re resolution approving 2017 auditor's report. Uh, next one is a resolution for support of the UWRF Science and Technology Innovation Center. This resolution would support the request to build the technology center. Uh, and then the uh, last one is a resolution amending the fee schedule for 2018. Does anybody want to pull anything? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull consent agenda item number four, please. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we approve uh, consent agenda items two and three. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Downey, you pulled number four. Right. Um, just a quick question. Regarding the new pavilion that's being put in, is that going to be considered um, the same fee that we've had uh, for our enclosed park shelters or is that going to have a different fee in the future it's, it's listed as different isn't it julie i thought it was the same i thought it was Actually, oh is it looks the same i thought it was the same oh i thought if i was looking at the fee schedule i thought they had uh, enclosed shelters and then the pavilion was something else i may be wrong which is probably right cool. <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> we'll get back to you on that no uh it says both the storm shelter in um, Hoffman and the storm shelter in Glen Park. They're both listed. Are listed and yeah. they're the same amount. At 75 a day. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, I move for approval for a consent agenda item number four. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next, move on to ordinance uh, number 2018-09. This is an ordinance repealing section 2.04.130, Committee of the Whole. And this is the first reading. Uh, the second reading will be on August 28th. Does the council have any questions about this? Okay. Next one is, uh, again, this is the first reading for ordinance number 2018-10. This is an ordinance repealing section 10.24.080 for the snowmobile renter's <coughs> license. Uh, there again, the second reading will be at our next council meeting on the 28th. Does the council have any questions about this? Okay, uh, there again, we have another first reading. This is ordinance number 2018-11. This is an ordinance repealing, repealing section 10.20 of uh, bicycles. There again, the, uh, August 28th will be a second reading. And does the council have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, got one more first reading. This is ordinance number 2018-12. This is ordinance amending chapter 2.64 uh, for the utility advisory board. There again, this is the first reading and the second reading will be scheduled for August 28th. Does the council have any questions? Yes. Uh, I would I would make the suggestion or recommendation, I don't know how the rest of my council members feel, but uh, the wording in this is changing it to president. Uh, the actual changing is from secretary to vice president. President and secretary are kind of holdovers from when this was a commission. Mm -hmm. And I think chairman, chairperson and vice chairperson better reflect or create 
continuity. uniformity, continuity among the other city committees. So I would recommend to staff and to others, if there's interest, that we change it from president and uh, vice president to chairperson and vice chairperson. Okay. Not a big deal, but I agree with that. Seems common sense. So, uh, would, a, would an amendment be appropriate? This is a first just, reading, first so first I think reading they can, can just bring have, it back. Yeah. Okay. Right. Could they? Dan and I, I will think discuss whether it matters that the president wasn't mentioned in this. Um, oh. Adding a chairperson, I doubt that. I don't. We'll I don't think that's a substantive f amendment. I think you can make that change and do the second reading at the next meeting. But okay. So. There you have it. Thank you. Okay. I have one question on that as so well. So you yep. can make that change at the you, when it comes up at the next. Oh, okay. So we'll have to make an Staff amendment then. We can either change it in advance or yeah. we can just have you make an amendment at the just meeting. Change it in advance? I'd be happy if staff just changed it. So my question on that would be um, if the president or the chairperson and vice chair um, are not in attendance of that meeting, who would hold that meeting? I. Probably won't, probably won't have enough people to hold the meeting. Well, <laughs> I would imagine, I'm not sure what the yeah. bylaws say in that committee, yeah, but I, I would know. imagine they would elect, with those people present, they would elect around that. somebody to run it. Do we need that in the ordinance? Well, this was this was just changing the titles. Right. is really all it was doing, addressing the tasks, more or less. We'd likely use Robert's rules to yeah. say that right. since those two are, since named officers are not present, then typically there's... In Robert's rules, a section that says, "What do you do?" And, yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, but sounds good. Just okay. wanted clarification. Would be a question about quorum too, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah. you'd be awful close. Given the size of those commit, uh, most of our committees. Thrilling stuff. We kept all the people Ooh, here for that yeah. too. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one is resolution regarding Federal Energy Regulation Commission for the FERC Hydro Relicensing. This resolution would affirm. The resolution already passed by the City Council on February 27th and direct staff to proceed uh, with the integrated license process and settle agreement with FERC. So anybody have anything they want to say? You Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of oh, sorry. resolution regarding Federal Energy Regulatory Commission hydro relicensing. Second. Okay, now questions or comments? I have a few I have a few yep. comments um, first of all I want to say thanks to everybody that came out tonight and uh, I appreciate the interest and um, I think it's important you know that everybody we all kind of hold each other accountable and that's part of what's happening in this process and um, there's nothing wrong with that um, it's just a part of the natural <clears throat> the democratic process to have these different interests and everybody is watching everyone else to make sure that um, we're all doing the right thing. So um, um, I applaud that. Uh, in my mind, um, what one of the reasons why there's a little bit of tension around this tonight and um, a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Utility Advisory Board was that um, really FERC kind of gave us, um, I don't want to say they let us on, but they, they, they uh, gave us some, some thoughts or gave us some feedback, the city staff at least, that uh, we had uh, other options available to us. And I think that um, they're very, um, some of those options really went uh, directly to what we were trying to accomplish in the cheapest way possible. Um, if we could have a 15-year extension and not have to go through a relicensing process, I think, uh, well, according to TRC, um, that would be the, one of the cheapest, you know, a cheaper option than going through an entire um, integrated relicensing process. Um, so I think, you know, when we bring those kinds of ideas forward and we're trying to, uh, you know, that kind of idea is just we're trying to, you know, uh, keep the taxpayer in mind here and also um, narrow down the road so there aren't a lot of um, paths off to the side that we can get caught up in later. Um, so I am supportive of um, a parallel path of an extension, or at least ha uh, having staff, uh, telling staff or directing staff to uh, continue exploring an extension with um, with FERC. 
I mean, how hard, it, to, just to, to ask for that isn't going to cost us a whole lot. And it could push FERC, uh, you know, maybe they'll uh, regain their senses and do something that is actually for people instead of, you know, just putting <laughs> up roadblocks. Um, <coughs> Um, that said, I do think that the, uh, you know, I, I agree with Mr. Chambers who spoke um, and, and, and stated that we could do these things at the same time. Um, I do support, um, obviously, um, an integrated uh, relicensing process that includes a settlement agreement, which is what we all talked about in February. Um, and, and I fully expect that we'll, we'll move forward with that. Uh, um, but I, I think that, um, one of the keys is that if we're going to get this done at the lowest cost, so TRC gave us a range back in 2014, uh, relicensing with a settlement agreement, $191,000 to $379,000. That's a big range. And um, uh, quoting from that report, the settlement agreement will hopefully allow the city to eliminate or decrease the scope of many of the studies in favor of using currently available da data or easily developable data to determine necessary license requirements. And what that really is saying is with a settlement agreement between the city and the stakeholders, um, the registered stakeholders with the FERC process, that we can build a trust and verify kind of situation. Um, so this, the settlement agreement is going to be absolutely critical to getting the, the cost of the relicensing down to a reasonable level. Um, and I'm glad to see that it's in this um, proposal and so I'm, I'm happy um, that, uh, that it made it into this. I also wanna say thanks to Diane, uh, Ms. Odine, who um, I think, um, made a, a, a good uh, motion in the UAB to give us a little more time to have further research done by staff over the last couple of weeks and, and have this discussion tonight. So appreciate that. Um, I, also, I also have one comment, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm in favor of the um, resolution. Um, <coughs> For, and, and one of my key reasons is that um, uh, FERC is a federal uh, commission that we don't have any control over, but drafting a settlement agreement between the city and the stakeholders is something we have total control over. Um, so I see that as being um, uh, where, where, we, uh, where we make promises to each other and hold each other accountable. So thank you. Anybody comment, yep. Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Um, I agree with, with both Mr. Watson and Ms. O'Dean. Uh, FERC is, is not my favorite agency, probably never has been, sure won't be now. Um, it would be great if they would be reasonable and give us a 15-year extension. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what the cost would be. It would be interesting to hear what that parallel cost would be um, if, we, if we could get that data. But I, I, would, I would consider being in support of, of a parallel, if I thought it was reasonable that FERC would change their mind. From the feedback I received from staff on one-on-one -on -one conversations, it doesn't sound like FERC was gonna be very reasonable. Um, in fact, it sounded like they were a bit irritated that we got a five-year extension to begin with. Um, so, but things change. Maybe that opportunity is there. Um, I agree that a settlement agreement is good for all the stakeholders and for everybody to, to uh, make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, when, as has been pointed out already by several of us and, and several comments, Mr. Bjork especially, um, when we voted on this in February, we voted with the idea that we were gonna have to do a 30 year license renewal. Um, then we kind of got a peek behind the curtain and uh, it looked like we might be able to do something less expensive, more streamlined and we all got excited about that and wanted that and uh, then they, sort of took that away from us. So um, I, I'm in favor of the resolution. Um, I, I would consider being in favor of, of what Mr. Watson was talking about if I understood the costs and knew those situations better, but that's, that's where I guess where I'm at. I, else? Yeah. I'd like to thank everybody that was involved in this process from way back at the beginning. Um, there was lengthy um, community input. There was a 
lot of study into this issue and I know there's going to be many more uh, studies and input from the community going forward and, and I think that's a great uh, uh, thing that we have here in River Falls is that we can all come together um, like minds not like minds and, and kind of just mash it all together and what's going to be the best for the city of River Falls in the end um, and, and that's really the ultimate goal without uh, bickering or fighting or protesting outside that's to not have those things in a process like that this it's it, it's amazing um, because you get a lot of outside influences that want to come in and throw their foot in the door when really at the end of the day it, it's the city of River Falls residents that have the direct impacts of this um, you know we get a lot of tourism implications that come in and I think we've been through all of that and we don't need to rehash all of that as well but I think um, this resolution is the best foot forward uh, moving forward I'm not in favor of shortening um, the process I think there was a, a lot of input that went on both sides of that I think 2026 and 2040 is definitely a great guideline to work from obviously that's a guideline it can be moved up it could be moved back who knows what happens in 10 15 20 years in the city there could be other things that come out but as it is written I, I'm in favor of it yeah. mr. mayor else? I do have yeah. some comments yeah. um, I definitely agree with the recommendation of pursuing a parallel path both by mr. Watson mr. Gagne mr. Morissette um, a parallel process we probably have a good answer as to far as what the cost of such would be right now of pursuing an application to FERC for a license amendment for license extension for another 13 years um, when we applied for the license extension in 2015 uh, we should have costs tabulated for having done so or we should know what those direct uh, activities were that we could account for those expenses um, as far as I'm aware it was a fairly straightforward process in order to file for an amendment to our application or our license excuse me uh, was simply a letter to FERC and I believe it was drafted by Ray French at the time so we could look back and find out how much that cost to draft and at that time we didn't think that we had much of a chance of being granted that license extension uh, and we initially had that extension denied and we had to reapply an appeal and it went to a higher level at FERC and uh, just because it had unanimous stakeholder support I feel is a lot of what weighed in on FERC to propel that license extension so I feel that there is no harm right now and I highly recommend that we pursue a parallel path of pursuing a license extension application at this time in order to fulfill what is in the city's resolution from February um, I absolutely cannot support this evening's resolution that is on the table uh, the integrated licensing process is by far the most expensive course that our community could pursue at this time uh, we have already decided and in February the resolution calls for ultimate restoration of the Kinnikinnick River through removal of both of the dams the most straightforward path to doing so and the least expensive option available to us is that of license surrender leaving the facilities in place that uh, option has been recommended by numerous stakeholder organizations in as many as eight different letters to the City Council in November and December of last year those letters all went unanswered by the City Council in the city and that input was not taken into the process but that cost estimate for surrender leaving the facilities in place is only twenty four thousand to two hundred and thirty six thousand dollars with our resolution from February we have agreed that at some point we will surrender the license so the cost of surrendering the license is going to happen whether we do it now or whether we do it in 15 or 20 years so that expense will be incurred incurring additional expense at this time in the amount of two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars for relicensing we will never recoup that cost we can argue all day about the finances of our hydroelectric facility but a comprehensive financial analysis of our facility has not been conducted we don't know the bottom line numbers we have not had a non-biased or independent analysis of the financials of the hydroelectric, hydroelectric facility conducted so we can go back and forth all day about what should be a cost what should be a revenue for the hydroelectric facility but those numbers we simply don't have when stakeholders requested that the city do a more comprehensive financial analysis they were told that they would not do so because the facility was basically a wash financially it didn't make a lot of money it didn't lose a lot of money they weren't interested in investing in that so if we want to talk about numbers and make the decision based on the finances we should do a more in-depth comprehensive financial analysis but the decision has already been made based on what we want to do with our river and our hydroelectric facility and that is remove it and restore the Kinney Connect River so sorry to go on but I appreciate you all listening to my comments here anybody else 
I'm just going to read a little bit that uh, I had gotten in part of the packet, just so the public's a little bit aware of what's kind of going on here. Uh, what I read was, after the second meeting, FERC staff stated that, in their opinion, relicensing was the only viable process option for the project, given the proposed timelines of staggered hydroelectric facility decommissioning. Based on, staff, based on FERC staff's input, as of the July 23rd meeting with the, UTL, with the UA board, TRC strongly recommends that the UAB follow FERC's guidance and, remove, and move forward with relicensing, as opposed to pursuing options FERC staff deemed unviable. And that is why I'm in support of this resolution. So. Okay. Anybody else have anything like to say? Okay, before we vote, I just have one. I got a prepared statement I'd like to read. Okay. Um, first, I'd want, you know, like everyone else, I'd like to thank uh, the citizens of River Falls, the city staff, the, the Kinney River Corridor Committee, the stakeholders group, the River Falls Utility Advisory Board, and the city council for all their hard work, dedication, and time on this important decision. The council put a lot of thought and hard work into their February 27th resolution, and part of that decision was to relicense the hydros. As a city and community, we have to keep trusting in ourselves and all of the other groups involved that will keep moving forward down this path that we have started on as we move forward. The ideal that we can gather all parties and find a legal document that will satisfy everyone and that everything will go exactly as they planned in 2018 over the next 20 years seems like effort that can better go towards shaping and imp implementing the future with the vision we already outlined in February. Last month, the Utility Advisory Board recommended that the City Council affirm the February 27, 2018 resolution and direct staff to proceed in the integrated licensing process and settlement agreement. I think this is the only logical path that the City has and is the path that the City will follow. It would be very costly and time-consuming for staff to pursue any of the other options since FERC has already said that they would not entertain the other alternatives we thought might be helpful for implementing the February resolution. A, settle agreement, a settlement agreement can be helpful in some cases and is recommended to be part of the ultimate solution here. However, the settle agreement is not a magic document that provides ultimate clarity. I think this has been a very long and emotional process for everybody so far. A lot of thought and hard work has been put into it. Now is the time to make sure that we continue to work together and to make sure that, we have done, to make sure that what we have done so far will not be undone. I think we have put a plan in motion that serves the community well. And I encourage everyone, myself included, to guard against people trying to rehash old arguments and unreasonably second guess the outcome of this process that is not productive or time well spent. Now that this machine is in motion, I myself look forward to working with everyone on the next step in the process, deciding what the future holds for the whole river corridor and what we as a whole city want our river to look like in the future once the dams are gone. Okay. So, got a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay, next move on to reports. First one is reports from the Historic Preservation Commission. And the H H H HPC Chair Heidi will uh, give us a presentation. Okay, hi everybody, I'm Heidi Hines and I am the chairperson of the Historic Preservation Commission for the City of River Falls and I'm just here to briefly kind of tell you what we have been up to this year. Let me look for the arrow, there we go. Our purpose and intent is to protect, enhance and preserve historic structures, sites and district districts. Uh, we're to safeguard the city's structural heritage stabilize property values and enhance aesthetic character and enhance the city's historic attractions to support tourism. Uh, powers and duties include, we recommend designation of historic sites and structures. Uh, we recognize historic structures by uh, placking them and we issue certificates of appropriateness 
although we haven't done that. That hasn't come up in recent years. Um, things that we've done in the past is achieve certified local government status, which is huge and, and gives us a lot of opportunities uh, for grants that a lot of other cities don't have. Um, w through that, we've been able to come up with a historic preservation plan um, that we are going through and, and uh, modernizing. It's a few years old. Um, we have been able to provide a historic resources inventory just a few years ago uh, that, that's available for everybody to see. Um, we've also prepared a grant for the National Register application, which just came in um, last month that the Swinging Bridge is now on the National Register of Historic Places. So that's awesome. Um, some of the things we did last year for our members, uh, several of us attended the Local History and Historic Preservation Conference. The State Historical Society puts this on every year. Uh, Pat, this last year it was in La Crosse. Uh, and they have great workshops and we learn a lot. We, we learned about connecting with your community, monuments, markers, and meanings uh, on several off-site off workshops touring some of their museums and their, um, they have some really cool oral history signage throughout town. You can call the number on the sign and hear some, some neat history. So uh, <clears throat> some great ideas. Coming up next year, there's also a conference in Elkhart Lake, or I'm sorry, this fall in October that some of us are going to. Um, recently, we have toured several different buildings looking at the inventory of city-owned artifacts. Uh, for several years, the city has kind of passively been collecting things of historical uh, importance, and they are kind of scattered uh, around different locations of the city. There's a few here listed cold storage and at the power plant in Larson Park. Um, I have a list here somewhere, and we can get it to you if you don't have it, of all of the items. Uh, including, just off the top of my head, there's lots of old school desks, um, there's the old fire engines, uh, there's pieces from the old um, freight house, including the scale, and the portions of the wall that had all the graffiti of all the guys that used to work there. Uh, so we did provide an inventory, and I can get you a list of the items. Uh, the idea is to, to kind of consolidate them maybe into one location, uh, and kind of decide what to do with them. So, so far we've just identified them, made a list, and, and that's where we're at. Um, we're lucky to have some members on our group who collect and have a lot of historic images and photographs of River Falls. Uh, and they've been helpful with both the park board and the utility board who are moving forward with, with some projects in coming years, like the Glen Park uh, Pavilion and the new utility building that do have spaces for historic photos or, or art <coughs> to be included in them. So uh, we found a lot of images. We haven't narrowed it down yet, but we're in the process of that. Uh, public outreach, we have done walking tours with the Garden Club. Um, we can provide you with this too. We put together a great walking tour with photos, kind of just along the, the pathway here of you know what used to be uh, along the pathway. So. Uh, that's already done, and if any other groups are interested, we're happy to provide that. Uh, postcards for River Falls Days. Every year we do a postcard, and this year it was the Falls Theater. I have some here that I can give to everybody. When we're done, um, we decided to do, to do more. This year we ordered 750, and they were gone uh, in short order, so we ordered 750 more. It's very inexpensive. Uh, and HPC members will be handing these out at um, other events too, like Bacon Bash and uh, River Dazzle and things like that. Um, the River Falls Academy, the, the school district reached out to us wanting some help with identifying uh, parts of the academy building that were historic, of historic significance or could possibly be repurposed or reused. So we did tour with them, and I also have a list of all the, the items in the school <coughs> worth maybe saving. Um, like the one pictured here is the, uh, the cornerstone. Apparently there's a time capsule in there. Uh, the flagpole is older than the school. Uh, there's some other, some stone work in the building. 
and things like some of the hardwood floors and classroom doors. Um, as to what they actually do with them, that's really up to the school district, but we just were happy to, to be included uh, in the process. Um, as mentioned before, we did plaque a few historic buildings, uh, 109 and 111 South Main, I think that's Mel's Midtowner, uh, the Glover School, we did the, the frame shop downtown, I forget what the address is, it used to be the route bike shop years ago, uh, and we're working on the Prairie Mail too. Uh, oh, here's the postcard, 750 handed out, and I'm going to give you guys one in a minute. Uh, the Swinging Bridge did make landmark status. We were added to the state register in February and um, to the national register <coughs> just last month in July. We do plan on placking the bridge with a, you know, added to the national register uh, thing sooner than later. That's a, it will be at our next meeting. We'll look at some designs for those. Uh, we're also going to be putting together a short PowerPoint presentation with photos about kind of the history of, of the park, the bridge, the, you know, how it came to be in the first place and how it made it onto the National Register. Uh, the Tuesday Club has asked us to do that in February, and again, this is something that we can provide for other groups when it's done. Um, as for what's ahead, I mentioned the HPC retreat in Elkhart Lake in October that several of us will be going to. Um, Strategic planning for 2019. We are planning a retreat um, for our members and staff members. We have some new staff members this year. I really want to thank Brandy and Amy and, and Sam for all their help, kind of replacing uh, Tony Steiner, who had been our, our uh, staff person for many years. So we are having a retreat in, the, in November, I believe. We have uh, Joe DeRosa from the state Historical Society coming to do a couple hours, just kind of training session uh, with us about HPC law and fun stuff like that. Um, we are also exploring opportunities for historic interpretive riverfront walking tour. Um, you know, now that the pathway is completed and kind of whatever happens with the dams, this is a separate thing. We're looking into signage and different locations along the pathway. Um, and, and how we can use some interpretive signs. So we're, we're just getting started on this process, nothing definite yet, and we're definitely open to suggestions, I think, about that. But there's some sites that really beg for it along the tour, starting from the Prairie Mill on Division Street, you know, you've got the railroad stuff, and the, the mills on down the line. So we're looking forward to doing that, and thank you. I think that's it. Does anybody have... Any questions? Mary, I've got Give a question for us. If I could. I've got two actually for you, Heidi. Who's talking? Yes. Here. Okay. Hi. Sorry. Um, <laughs> what's at Larson Park that we've got stored? Um, let me find my list here, Scott, and I can tell you. Is it? Mm -hmm. Larson Park. Excuse me. Larson Park Maintenance Shed has the old Greenwood School panels that. Oh. Align the top of the okay. school. I yep. think they've been replaced. I don't know when, but we have all the old ones. <coughs> There's a sign from the uh, Ingram Center, which used to be kind of right here. Uh, a lot of stuff from Lund's Hardware, oh. including the some tin ceiling tiles. There's like a big pulley. Some of the exterior um, stone pillars from the outside of the building. What else? Oh, there's the there's two very old street lights from downtown River Falls, like pre electricity, pre gas even. Oh, they're pre they're oh. they're beeswax candles hmm. they held in them. Uh, and a big flywheel. Do you uh, Michael, you came along that day. Do you remember anything else I don't that know was what there? That I think was, that's no. all I had listed. Maybe a scale in the back? At the scale, let me see, was that there? I might be remembering. Yeah, it's that's that was in there. I could. There were school desks, the signal box. There's some large maps at the public works building. Cold storage has uh, lots of gravestones and markers from Foster Cemetery. I mentioned the freight house things, fire engines, the horse-drawn fire hose. Uh, there's lots of items at the meter shed from the power plant, light fixtures and dials and gauges and electrical things. So. Um, 
They're scattered around. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good Heidi, all of these items are intended to be kind of brought into a single location and better inventoried and then the long term vision is development of a of the museum, like a local museum with these items. Yes. Any other yeah, questions? My other question real quick was Yes. Do we have anything else on the National Register? Is the pool on the National Register? The pool, I think, is now. Where's Brandy? It is. Brandy yes. Sorry, yes. right there. The the pool and the the bathhouse. Yeah. Yeah, the bathhouse. Are right. yeah. and and we did check with the state <coughs> that any like future changes that might happen <coughs> to the pool would not affect the status of that as like a historic site. So it can, the, if, as long as the bathhouse stays and the, the pool can change, it's still on the National Register. Um, at the University, North and South Hall oh, are on the National question. Register, and I believe the um, the Freeman House on Fourth Street. Is that the right one? Do you know? Uh, there's a couple private residences. I think the Freeman House. Is it the Freeman House? And maybe the Knowles House? Oh. I think there are two. Oh, yeah, that's right. Is it on 3rd Street? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. There's a few over in that neck of the woods. So. Good, thank you. Yes, any other questions? Yeah. Hi, I was hi, Heidi. Good to see you. Hi. It's uh, Beto Will, and um, I was really happy to serve on the Historical Preservation Committee. Great. And um, it was really exciting to see how we took the uh, Swinging Bridge to state and then to national mm -hmm. and uh, it's just extremely exciting for me as a person and one of the things I remember we were talking about a while back was we had a difficulty filling a vacancy and, and I think it was because we needed a realtor was it or an architect or an architect so I figured this might <laughs> yeah. be a good time for you to talk about that because it's hard to find those people in the community. it is we do still have one opening on our on our commission it needs to be somebody who lives in the city of River Falls and I think preferably a realtor or an, or an architect but I think if if we can't find one of those that any you know regular person would would do they are recommended <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> breathe in on uh, but if anybody's interested uh, the the way to go about that is to you know write a letter to me. to the mayor and they'll talk about it and uh you can join us it's actually pretty fun it's not it's contentious so mm -hmm. um any other questions for heidi from anybody okay mm -hmm. Here's the Falls Theater postcards. Take one and pass them around. Thanks, if you like. Heidi. Thanks for everything you guys do. Thank you, Heidi. Appreciate it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Next, we'll do on the administrator's report. anybody has got any questions for Scott or Scott? Whatever you want to. Sorry, uh, customer appreciation event uh, at City Hall. That will be 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We typically uh, host city employees and relatives and council members and friends uh, host about 700 to 800 uh, folks for lunch here at City Hall. So we'll hope for good weather. Um, and, so, and that's rain or shine. Um, so even if it's not good weather, we'll still be here and have lots of hot dogs um, for, for folks. Uh, September 3rd, city offices will be closed in observance of Labor Day. Um, we did hear and pass this message along to the city council that the Wisconsin Court of Appeals has um, denied their, their request to hear a, uh, an appeal on the town of Troy versus city uh, of River Falls. So they, they've dismissed that appeal. As they should have. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything for Scott? Okay, next we move into closed session. Uh, Pro Wisconsin State statutes for the following purposes uh, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. To wit, sale of property in Sterling Ponds and purchase of property by the sewer utility. Mr. Mayor, I move we recess into closed session. Second. Christy, can I have a roll call, please? Odin. Downing. Yes. Yes. Anye. Watson. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Yes. 
We are in closed session.